Welcome into the Maddie and Micah show. Oh. I'm Micah and Maddie show. Let's just get that correct. We just we talked about it, right? No, we Micah didn't. Micah and Maddie. No, I. I'm the host. All right, you do the intro, we'll talk about it later. Oh, okay, fine. Welcome into the M&M show. We'll Ooh, just do that for now. I like that, mm -hmm. I like okay, that, okay. M&M. Maddie Glab, Micah Hyde here as your host. We're gonna tackle Bills, we're gonna tackle the NFL, pop culture, take you inside of One Bills Drive, everything that happens inside everything. the building, thanks to a guy right here who knows it all best, a Micah bit. Hyde. Just a little bit. I think you know pretty well, pretty well. And we're gonna have a lot of fun because that's what we wanna do mm -hmm. on this show. So let's kick it off here with a little bit of fit check. We're gonna go through mm. a couple looks that we loved heading into this Thursday night football game against yes. the Patriots, which was a dub, by the way. Yes. And we picked a couple of our favorites, so we're gonna start off first with Saran Neal. Saran Neal, we're gonna have him on the show later. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he showed up wearing a North Face sash Gucci coat. And, I, you know what, I told him when he walked in the locker room, I said, Saran, you better make plays today, because that's too fly not to. So I, I, I really liked his fit for sure. He pointed out he's wearing some Doc Martens, which I love those shoes. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. always wonder also when a guy decides to wear a coat this big, I love the coat, but at yeah. this point, are you walking into the stadium like, I am sweating, this is a little bit too hot maybe? He probably just put it on. He probably just, just put, put it on, on for walking the Walking off the bus, he put it on for a moment. He knows where the photographers are. You gotta be, you gotta okay. be, you gotta be smart We like that. it, Saran. Yeah, so I'm coming down the elevator. Um, obviously, I'm still traveling with the team and stuff. I'm coming down the elevator. And I see Kay wearing this Kobe sweatshirt. Kyrie Elam. Yeah, and I said, that's, I was like, that's fly. And he actually knows the lady really who cool. made it. And I was like, yeah, you're you going to be on fit check this week for sure. I like his pants yeah. too. Yeah, I like them too. He's yeah. got some rips in them, some black pants. Yep, yep. Rocking he knew what the he was Nikes. Doing when he put that on for sure. Yeah, I yep. think he looks good. I love it. Uh, a couple who weeks else? ago, we had D Ham on. Mm -hmm. um, he talked about his fashion. And what D he Ham always on. dresses nice. He always dresses nice. I like this. It's just a clean, all black. Uh, you know, a little spot of color in there with the shades on. Yep. The he's, AirPods. He's got the Louis bag. Yeah, the Louis bag with the with the, the green water. Outline. Yeah, he he knew what he was doing. The he knew Fiji it was water out. though. The Fiji water. Yeah, I mean, yeah. All right, I threw this one in last minute. Mm -hmm. I had to give some love to Roger Saffold yeah. because look at this jacket. It, that jacket, you know what? I'm scared that to even look jacket. and see how much that thing costs because uh, that's uh, I think it's a couple thou. Yeah, that's, that's a that's a pretty penny, but you know, Raj is, he's wearing a nice my Ohio boy. You mm -hmm. know, he he knows how to dress. And he's got the Louis bag, the Louis luggage. Yes, they all got, you know, all has to match. It does. If you go that far, it all has to match. <laughs> yeah, young Steph. And our final look. Young Steph, he always puts it on. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you, a every simple little week. suit action. I don't know. I mean, I, I like couldn't get pants. away with that. I don't know if you could. I don't, I don't think I could. Only Stefan Diggs could. But it, it looks good. What do you think that's called? I was going to look it up before <laughs> we started taping this, and I totally forgot. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it's called, but Steph always puts it on, man. He, he knows This is doing. like high fashion. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what this is. You don't know what this is. Nope. This is a, another planet that Steph lives on that a lot of people live on that uh -huh. look good when they get dressed. Steph is one of those guys. But it's about how you go out there and you play. And he puts it on. And he Look backs good, it up. play good, feel good. Hey, that's, it, that's, that's Steph Diggs, baby. Okay, so out of these, who is number one? Because we're going to keep a point total as we go on here. Ooh, I got to pick number one. You're going to pick your favorite. I'm going to okay. pick my favorite. My favorite would be, out of all of these, ooh, we got him coming on the show. And I ooh, really, and I said something. I said something when he walked in. I just knew it was the fit that I felt like was the, was the number one. So I'm going okay. with it. Ran Ran, Saran Neal. Saran gets a point. I'm going with Roger. Okay. I love the yep. black and the yellow. Maybe yep. it's because I went to Mizzou. I don't know. It just Those works. It goes colors. together. You well, it's like gold. black and gold. You guys are gold. Yeah. I guess it's more yeah. Iowa color. So it's the color. Iowa guy. <laughs> but you know, we could push a little bit of Mizzou gold in there. I like it. I, like I think it. it looks good. I like the tiger shirt underneath. So, so one to one. Saran one to Roger. one. We'll, we'll keep a tally going here. All right. See who's the leader at the end of the year. It was also the My Cause, My Cleats game. Mm -hmm. We wanted to shout that out because that's such a fun game. Yes, it um, is. To get to be on the sidelines for it, to get to see what guys choose, what um, nonprofits, what programs they choose to represent that are near and dear to their hearts yeah. on their cleats. Uh, I think it's it's such a cool game. I love seeing the cleats as they come out. Yeah. You were rocking some shoes because you didn't have your cleats on, obviously, yeah, but yeah. there were still some cool they shoes. Were cool. They so were we cool. picked out some of our favorite, but 
shout out to all the guys who participate in mm -hmm. it. Um, number one is Josh Allen. I love him. I love this him. This is the Patricia Allen Fund mm -hmm. um, at Oshai Children's Hospital. I believe he had a patient actually design these. That, that's, that's cool. I, I, yeah. A few years back, I had a, a child um, design mine also, and they turned out amazing. Um, Oshai Children's Hospital, you know, special place in our heart. My mm -hmm. wife and I, um, you know, had a daughter and ended up there for a quick little visit. Um, the, the people up there are amazing, um, awesome people, down to earth, so shout out to them. And these cleats are, are awesome, go Josh. They look that's, good, that's they're cool. nice, clean yeah. and white. Yeah. Number two, we've got Dawson Knox, mm -hmm. Punt Pediatric Cancer Collaborative. Uh, they provide families in Western New York facing pediatric cancer with critical programs that offer financial, practical, and emotional support. Mm -hmm. You love the look of these. I love the look of these, these are, these are awesome. And again, I showed up to one of Dawson's events um, a couple months ago and just touched my heart, touched my heart to see, yeah. you know, the, the, the people um, there tell their stories um, about their children going through stuff and it, it touched my heart. So um, once again, Dawson, that's pretty cool, man. Good job. Way to go, Dawson. And Micah, these are yours. Yes. Imagine for Youth Foundation. Yep. This is your foundation. You want to share us a little, yeah, little bit? Yeah, Imagine for Youth started back in college. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we give sporting event, uh, sporting equipment to, to kids that need it. And also, you know, whether it's academics or whatever, we provide uh, funding for teachers. Um, everybody knows us in Buffalo for the uh, for the softball game yep. that we have annually. Such um, a fun game. Such an amazing <clears> game. <throat> uh, you know, we raise money for Western New York. So Imagine for Youth. On the other side, Cares Foundation, another foundation that's near and dear to, to my family. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to support them and, and give them a shout out and give them awareness. So um, yeah, I like I wasn't the two able different to play. colors too, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I wasn't sweet. able to play, but I, I had to be a part of this. Totally, yeah. totally. Uh, next up, we have Taiwan Jones. He was repping Candles in the Sun. Mm -hmm. So Candles in the Sun, Sun stands for Save Your Neighborhood. They unite together to advance communities and overcome challenges faced by families and youth in inner city neighborhoods. He does a lot with this organization. Yeah. Um, they're located, I think, on the east side of Buffalo, I wanna say, somewhere in the city of Buffalo. Um, they do a lot of great stuff. These, these are another cleat set stood out to me. Um, you know, I, I love them. I'm, I'm a big white lace guy. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Um, and so, you know, just the colors, the white laces, pops. So Taiwan did a good job too. All right, shout out to all our guys who participated in My Cause My Cleats. Amazing design to the artists. Way to go, you guys went over the top yep. in the best way possible. All right, it's time to guess the stat. Mike and I are gonna try and stump each other with a couple bills related stats. We wanted to make it kind of easy. I don't know if this is gonna help at all, but easy we're gonna for me, but multiple difficult choice, for you. true, false. Okay. Michael was like, I'm just gonna guess um, Josh Allen's uh, passing yards. And then Michael, <laughs> let's, let's take it a step yeah, up from yeah. here. All right, so number one, the bills are nine and three through 12 games mm -hmm. for the, you're completing the sentence here, A, seventh time in franchise history, nine and three through 12 games for okay. the seventh time, that's A, 11th time in franchise history, mm. or C, the 14th time in franchise history. Do you think the Bills are nine and three through 12 games for the seventh time, the 11th time, or the 14th time in franchise history? Oh man, 14 seems like a lot. Seven seems like a little. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go in between. I'm gonna go in between You're and go with You're gonna go B, 11? Yeah. You are right, way to go. That's okay. what I'm talking about. So it's the third time in four seasons having this record through 12 games, okay. so. Okay, okay. So my question to you would be um, over or under? Okay. Over or under? Over or under. Over or under. Um, the Bills have led 17 to seven at halftime over the last game, the New England game. We were leading 17 to seven. Mm -hmm. um, what is Sean McDermott's record when leading at the half? Is it over 35 wins or under 35 wins? He has a good record when the team is leading at half. Yeah. I know that for a fact. But how many times have you led at half though? He's, this is his fifth season. Okay. So we're doing the math here. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say over. It is, it is over. Woo, is, what's the number? It. It's 45 and six. That's okay. his record leading that That's half. pretty good. That's very good. That's pretty so, good. The uh, Bills, get ahead at half. Get ahead at half, score on that okay, first drive. Yeah, for sure. All right, number two, Josh Allen, number two for me, Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs have linked up for 28 touchdowns since coming to Buffalo, Okay. the duo. Where does this rank on Buffalo's all-time list? 
there's been some great duos mm -hmm. in terms of quarterback wide receiver who have made their way through Buffalo, yeah. who have been in Buffalo for quite some time before Josh and Steph. So do they rank first on that list? No, not first. Second on that list or fourth on that list? 28 touchdowns. 28 touchdowns is a lot. Um, there's been some there's been some dogs in this franchise. So you're not saying first. No, it's not it's not first. Second or fourth. I'm gonna say fourth. They're not there. They're not to that second yet. I'm gonna say fourth. You're doubting them. Am I really their second? They're second. Oh man, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> we love you guys, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah, uh, second do. behind Jim Kelly and Andre Reed, who have 65. So they they've got some time to go. They're second, but they've got they've they're got. Not, they're all, second with what? 28. Oh, they, yeah, they got some time. They'll do that. First to 65. They rank fifth most among current NFL tandems. I'm sure you could guess who's number one. They're on the Chiefs. Oh, yeah, okay. Tra yeah, we Travis Kel Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes. That one. <laughs> they have 46. Okay. So they're in a good spot. Nice. We'll see if they can get to number nice. one. Okay. Yeah, they will. They will in a couple years. I love uh, that. For sure, franchise. Okay. So here we go. What do you got? Uh, last one mm -hmm. with 132 rushing yards in the last game yep. against New England. Yep. Um, the Bills have had 17 straight games with 100 plus yards and broke a tie for the second longest streak in team history. True or false? I'm going to say true. That is 100% true. And they had 16 straight games back in 1992, 1993, and behind a 34-game winning or 100 rushing yard streak in 1973. Mm -hmm. So true. I actually knew that. You didn't know. That. I did because I saw that on. It was leading into the game before the Patriots game, mm. leading into our Thanksgiving game. We had a I nice streak going, ones. and so I. I didn't cheat, I, but I see. I saw that. that stat and I was like, "That's impressive." Like, okay. like, I thought that was really, really good. All right, we've got Saran Neal joining us now on set. Every work, we're gonna have a player join us, and Saran, we decided that we would go with you first uh, for oh, a lot of different reasons. I feel yeah, I so welcome, special. welcome. Appreciate welcome. I told you. I told you. All right, you. Saran came to us in 2018. He was a fifth round pick, um, and round you have pick, been balling baby. ever since you've gotten to Buffalo. Mm. Big on special teams, big on this defense, second contract here, um, highest paid special teamer when you signed, which is big, big, big that stuff. Big. So this season, Saran, how has it been being a part of this team? What's it been like for you? You know, you are your, you're in your fifth season now, so you've you've been here for some time. Mm -hmm. Been here for a while. Uh, definitely been a blessing this year. Uh, this team this year is just very special. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely been a little roller coaster, but now we're down to three. You know, we just got to win on the road or whatever. We had like 12 games, what? Tw 12, three, and three, 15, three, three and 12. Three, 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 three games, games and 12. 12. Games. Yeah, like, oh yeah. man, got all it's three. Uh, I can't complain at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving this team, loving everybody, and, you know, just That's showing dope. the road. That's dope. So you got the, you got the new deal, like Maddie just said in the offseason. How, how did your, like, your mentality change once you got that new deal? Like, did it, did, you know, you went from just trying to make it before to now getting a big deal. Like, how, how has your mentality changed? Uh, the mentality really didn't change much or whatever, but I just know I just have a bigger role now mm -hmm. or whatever. We're definitely getting that type of contract, you know, like you say, the highest paid special team or whatever. Um, a lot of guys lean on me more mm -hmm. in special team room now. Coaches 100%. look at me to lead the room or whatever. I really don't have too much of an attitude change. I just have to approach the game differently because I know a lot of teams, you know, yeah. uh, a double game team me you. or a double <laughs> team yeah, me yeah. or triple team me or some type of tra uh, trap or whatever on kickoff or punt or whatever. But it is what it is. I mean, being the guy that I am, you know, it's, I'm always ready for it. Yeah. What is it like to go from a younger player to now a veteran? Because there's a point in your career where you're you're not a young guy anymore, and guys are starting to look up to you. Has that been an easy change, a different change? Is it weird to be looked at as somebody who's, I'm not going to call you as old as Micah yet. <laughs> Chill out. But <laughs> Chill out. Oh, he's, you know, he's an old head, too. You, he's an old head. But you know what's funny, though? When I first got here, uh, I actually uh, had a little bit of trouble picking everything up. And Micah and Poe actually, you know, I leaned on them because I was drafted as a safety, and they were just telling me, like, bro, you belong here. You belong here. You're, like, really athletic. Like, you're not going nowhere, so stop worrying about it. Just focus on football. And I just started believing in myself and believing in what those guys were telling me. And then, look, I mean, the blink of an eye, I'm in year five. Next thing you know. Uh, so, you know, early in my career, I, I played a lot of special teams. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember them throwing me out there at Gunner. 
And you probably don't believe this. And I'll never let you see the tape of me doing it because <laughs> that is a cool. whole different world. <laughs> Explain to the people at home or wherever they are how difficult playing Gunner is in the league. Like, you got, you got two guys standing in front of you that are trying to keep you at the line of scrimmage. So, like, explain to them what how, how that is. Uh, I want to see that tape. No, I ain't I'm not going to let you see that tape. <laughs> well, I'm about, I'm about 10, 15 yards out of Packers bounds. Tape. You 33, number 33, I 33 was 33, well. bro. I was all the way out of bounds, bro. It was but, bad. It was I bad. mean, the process of going out there, you know what I'm saying, just knowing you're going to go out there and be on punt, I mean, I don't really think much about it. Yeah. I, I know it's going to be two guys yeah. or somebody coming to, you know, trap me out. But yeah. it's just like with me, I just know I'm more athletic and more faster than everybody yeah. that's to guard me. So it's just like it's a no-brainer. I'm just going to run past you and push you out of my way yeah. and, you know, make it play on the field. You know, yeah. I really don't think too much about it. Saran, what type of pride do you have playing on special teams? Because this is a team that takes special teams seriously, and a lot of guys want to be a part of special mm -hmm. teams. Some offensive players, some defensive players who aren't out there on special teams probably wish they could because of uh, the way that Sean McDermott looks at special teams here in Buffalo. I think it's an attitude. I think uh, approaching the special team thing, you just got to have a mindset because you never really know what's coming. Just know it's somebody I was trying to, you know, take your job or whatever or take your position. Basically, like, stop you from making plays on the field. And when you don't make plays on the field, I mean, as yeah. it's been to see, you already know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's just like it's an attitude for me or whatever, just being the best guy on the field. And, you know what I'm saying, when the tape cut on, you just know you got to stop 33. Yeah. Or whatever. And if you don't stop me, or whatever, it's going to be a long day. That's yeah. how I approach the field. See, and, and I don't think people really understand, like, special teams is a big part of the NFL, oh, yeah. like, day to day. And, and you know, you got Josh Allen, you got Stephon Diggs, you got Jordan Poor, you got Tremaine, you know, you got these guys that go out there and they put in the work every single day um, on the defensive side and the offensive side. But to be honest, like guys like Saran, guys like Taiwan, like mm -hmm. Dirty Red, those type of guys, they make this team. Mm -hmm. they, those are the guys that make this team. So that's why I have you know, utmost, uh, utmost respect for guys like Saran um, and all that. And, you know, seeing y'all go out there and ball each and every week is, is amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, now to switch roles. You know, obviously, we, I know Saran as the guy that's going to come in the locker room being the most fresh guy. He tell you all the time. <laughs> I you know, think how, a lot of people know that, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but, but I've seen him do it for a while. I, th I feel like people just now, you know, with the primetime games, with the NFL. Like, who's this guy? Promoting these fits and stuff now. Like, now they're kind of being put on. But um, I see Saran all the time. Like, hey, yo, man, like, how much how much does it cost for you to design some some, some stuff for me, you know? Like, yeah. he's I, that appre guy. I appreciate so, I appreciate Saran yeah. because... We've talked about your style before, mm -hmm. and you said you like to put pieces together that mm -hmm. also include things from online shopping, from yeah. different places where, you know, a jacket may cost X, but the shirt under it may be only like 25 bucks. Yep. So I, I like that you put stuff together that people could see on Instagram, and they could be like, oh, I can actually buy this. Because yeah, some of our players drop bags yeah. on clothes. Drop yeah, bags. Really drop the bag bags, <laughs> yeah. really, whatever, but... Uh, I think it's uh, with the clothes thing, with the fashion thing, or the dressing thing, I feel like it's more of a personal thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, people always ask me, like, how much do you pay yeah, you yeah. Know, somebody to dress you, it your styles matter. or whatever, but I don't have a stylist. Um, I feel like dressing your stuff is more of a creative world of mm -hmm. what you think of how you feel and what you're feeling for the day of, like, comfortable or, like, where are you just feeling? And with me, that's how I go by my day, you know, especially when I'm shopping or whatever. Like, when I'm shopping, I just get pieces and pieces and pieces. I don't really just go in and shop for an outfit, put it something together, and try to match it up for that game. Like, I got a lot of pieces from over time, like two, three years from now. Like, I had this probably like three years, and this is my first time wearing it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how uh, big is your closet? Yeah, yeah, I was about to ask that. How many pairs of shoes do you have? Oh, man, I have I have a lot of shoes. Uh, do you I have probably, a shoe closet and a clothes closet? He probably, he, uh, wait, didn't you turn a room? It's half your I apartment turned a whole room into a closet. Turn a bedroom into a closet. Yeah, yeah. yeah I that's, need to see this. And I put my own shelves up or whatever, and I got wow. my clothes, and I got my shoes. It's like, my dream up. in life. Or whatever, but I mean... This didn't happen overnight, guys. This happened over five <laughs> years, <laughs> six years. You know, some, some people got that second it, contract, and he said, whatever. "Let me remake this bedroom." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, all the money been going to like hangers and shelves <laughs> and shoe boxes. It ain't been going to clothes because the pieces have been there. I just, you know, what I'm saying, just yeah, finally coming nice. together. Nice. So what's this but. look we have today? Uh, this look what, I had today. What was the mood coming into today? Oh, uh, you know what's funny? Y'all asked me what breakfast I had. I actually had that breakfast around about. 
10 30. <laughs> this is off day vibes. I, I Christmas woke up party late. was last night. The Christmas party last night. I woke up late or whatever, and I woke up, you know, got in a shower, and then I was like, oh, man, I have this event to go to that Mike asked me to go to or whatever. I'm like, what am I going to wear? So, this thing, I thought about it for a second. I'm like, you know what? I ain't going to put on nothing. Probably put a jogging suit on and go up there. Yep. And, you know, what's funny with this outfit I got on right now, it actually took me like 20 minutes to put it together. <laughs> <laughs> 20, it looks 25 good. minutes together. Because uh, I was just sitting the there. Shoes, and the uh, top. I looked outside, it was a little windy. Yep. You know, a little rainy, a little, rainy, <laughs> little wet. Rainy, yep. little wet, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to be warm. I ain't trying to get sick. So, uh, <laughs> with this, I just kind of threw on some stuff from Venture Stores. Uh, these pants came from a Venture Store, you know, actually downtown or whatever. I forgot the name of the store or whatever. It's actually a new store. It's right across the street from the uh, where you get your passport. Or whatever. I know, I know what you're talking okay. about. Talking about. I know exactly okay. what you're yeah, about. I actually got these from down there. Um, this jacket, this jacket comes from ASOS. Oh, yeah. um, Love y'all that think place. the jacket is expensive? Oh, this no. is from ASOS. And it looks uh, as the shoes, uh, a lot of people have been asking me the shoes because I wore a pair of these like going on the plane last game. Yeah, it was a blue and gray pair. And these yeah. actually are Solomon's, or oh, they're they're very comfortable. Um, and you know, as I dress, I just you know what I'm saying I love being comfortable. That's, um, that's, I don't really wear too much tea. tight clothes or whatever. I just go as I please and as I feel or whatever. And I mean, I like it. You know what I'm saying? If somebody else don't like that's their problem. But oh, with me, I just like going to feel how I feel and be comfortable. You know, grab me a little uh, latte or something from Starbucks and be on by my day. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, we've talked to multiple players on this team and in interviews I have. And I always ask guys who's the best dressed. We get Stefan Diggs mm -hmm. a lot, but we also get Saran Neal a mm -hmm. lot. So yep, players yep, respect yep. the type of stuff that you put on. We actually have uh, what you wore heading into the Patriots game. How would you rate this fit? Were you proud of it? I was very proud of it. I were, was we proud were of feeling it. comfy Maybe this, you this day as well. Said, Saran, that jacket. Ooh. North Face. Hey. North Face North says face, Gucci. North Face Gucci. Oh, you gotta look North real face. close. Yeah, you gotta look at the print. <laughs> Let me yeah. zoom in here. <laughs> uh, Dang. I just, I just knew it was gonna be on prime time, man. Uh, prime time looks. Prime time look, and I knew it was gonna be cold. Do you have a prime time section in your closet? I actually don't. It's all oh, prime time. But you have a section in your closet where you know, like this is that's where it's at. You yeah, have to. Not really. I mean, most of the clothes you just know. Uh, Where's, what's a look for prime time and what's yeah. not a look for prime time? But most of the things is even if it's not a look for prime time, you can make it look for yeah. prime time. Even with that outfit or whatever, uh, what I was thinking, uh, I just knew it was gonna be cold. I knew it was gonna be cold, windy, <laughs> might New be England, snowing, December. whatever. New England always have bad weather. Yep. Every time we play, they might got some kind of control. I don't think we ever been there. <laughs> they have their own never been there. Been never, never. It's always cold. It's always been cold. And the wind always we're... blowing hard. Yeah. But with that, um. I just wanted to be comfortable, uh, especially with the jacket. It's a big, big jacket. It's a nice jacket, but I didn't want to do too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I got the regular wash blue jeans, and um, you know I have the look of like, you know what I'm saying, late '80s, early '80s. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I like it. Like the Denzel, I like Washington, the, shoes. the Denzel Washington look. Yeah. I just seen a couple um, outfits Denzel Washington and wash, walking into you know certain things and. He looked really, you know what I'm saying, presentable. Yeah, and back. you have See, to, you know what I'm saying? His looks. Wow. Oh, that's, whatever. That's, um, that's big time. I was thinking about actually going with, with a different type of shoe, but actually what, what the shoe I have on here is like the Dr. Martens. And, the Doc Martens, um, I Doc have Martins, those, those yeah. are sweet. Um, and everybody should know Dr. Martens, they, they, they are affordable. They are? Very affordable, like Because I can afford bucks. them, that's why. Or whatever, um, <laughs> they're very affordable. Um, they're at the mall, if anybody want to go get them, they're at the mall. Or whatever, and um, I just wanted to go with a very unique look. Um, I like it. When, when I actually dress up, I actually, don't like to look like I'm trying too hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I like to look very presentable and fashionable. Yeah. Something, what would a fashion icon say when you see me like, okay, that's very unique. I see how he put that together yeah. and he ain't doing too much. So you feel it. like that's the biggest compliment you can get from somebody is like, yeah, like, like, damn, that looks good. Like, you, you put it on. Yeah, like, you, like when you tell me like, Ran, you did that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> But, That's exactly you know what I'm saying. He walked in the locker room, I'm like, yo, Ran Ran, you, you did, did that. that. He was like, I <laughs> did that. That looks good. He was like, if you don't make a play tonight, I'm getting that jacket. Yeah. That's my mind. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what me, man. I just I just like to look very presentable and not doing too much. And like, it's just something I, I present myself and I, you know, really hold on. It's yeah. just like looking comfortable and cool. like presentable.
So you put time to put yourself together. You've got all the fits. You look great when you're heading into games. But you also spend a lot of time with your family mm. because you're a father of three now. Yep. You've got twins. You had three. another one this year. What's it like to have a few little ones running around? Well, uh, with my twins, uh, they're six years old. They're older um, now. They're six. Um, I had them at an early age, you know, two at once. Uh, I was 20, 21. Bam, bam. Oh, oh man. Right I was uh, a young guy in college and actually still trying to find my way in college because, you know, they actually switched me from playing receiver to, you know, playing really? safety. I, I actually had a scholarship playing uh, receiver. And if guys want to know, that's why I'm, why I'm so good at gunner. <laughs> I use my runner. <laughs> my receiver releases that gunner. If you go watch back and watch a couple games, I'm like, I'm good getting off the line or whatever. But um, they seen how I hit people, and, you know, that's why they call me Bam Bam. You got to go to safety. Or whatever. But uh, with, uh, with my kids, I had my daughters at an early age, and um, it's definitely been a blessing since then because I really, you know, that's my purpose. Um, and, as a, and, and as, you know, as a father, yep. you know, that's just something that I really – Think about every day that I wake up. It's mm -hmm. the opportunity to come here and, you know, you know, make a name for myself and also have, you know, food to eat in the house to put over their head, you know, yeah. when I go home so they don't have to live like I live when I was younger. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. and then I got my look my son. Oh uh, man. <laughs> I have my son. Uh he's four months now or whatever. Um he's my twin. He knows <laughs> he's my twin and he he has a definitely has a personality of his father. Or whatever, uh -oh. but, uh, he's already that's, playing that's Gunner, four yeah, months man. old. He already, he's already doing everything. He's already flipping over. Mm -hmm. oh he's my already gosh. trying to crawl. I remember those you days. Know what I'm saying? Like, don't you feel like? Don't you feel like when when you have another kid, it doesn't it just feel like it gives you just a more boost? You know what I'm saying? To go out here and just want to play for your child. Like I know that was like like for me. Like both kids I had was 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I was just rejuvenated. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just out there and I was playing for them. Obviously, you always play for your family. You always play for the people that support you, the people back home, all that type of stuff. But once it's actually your kids, it's just a whole different feeling. You go out there and you just play fast. You play free and you play for them. Yeah. Um, actually, having my, my son, uh, it was actually a lot of joy. You know, I wasn't a baby no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was a grown man or whatever. Uh, I was 27, mm -hmm. about to turn 28 or whatever. Um... I cried, honestly. Yeah. I cried because oh. I, I kind of knew that he was put here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And That's I awesome. always, you know what I'm saying, I had two girls at once, but once I had my son, I just knew yeah. it's this time. <laughs> and plus, you know what I'm saying? But also having a girl is a different feeling, too. It is. But it you is. also had two at once. I yeah, I had two at once. <laughs> That's so cool that they are now at the age where they know what their dad does for mm -hmm. a living, too. Mm -hmm. Six years old, you're with it. You're starting to get an idea of everything. You yep. know, dad's going to work to play football. I think that's awesome, too, when you can share that with your kids. Yeah, and they all, they all, they, I mean, they starting to realize what my job is. You know, they look at me as a superhero. But uh, actually leaving the house actually hurts a little bit because, you know, you know mm -hmm. as a father, you really, you know what I'm saying, you really don't spend as much, as much time mm -hmm. as you're supposed to because you always, you know what I'm saying, at the field. You had the field from, what, seven to long seven, hours. long hours yep. or whatever. But um, as when they look back on life and understand the life that I have put in front of them, exactly. they will understand what kind of dad I am. So every day I wake up and I think about that and the life that I want to give them before they even, you know what I'm saying, turn grown that they don't have to, you know what I'm saying, I won't do the work, but you know what I'm saying, they won't have to work as hard because yeah. I got it. That's you know? life. That's the purpose of life. Yeah. You might as well drop the mic. I know, <laughs> I don't right? Know what else you got to say now? All right, we want to finish off, though, by going through the secondary room. This is what we like to do. Mm. Kind of throw some scenarios out at you, best dressed, funniest, um, and see who you could come up with in the secondary room. So first off, best dress besides you. Best dress besides me in the secondary room? Ooh. Who, how can I say this? Let me I, see. I, Let me think. I'm going to probably be him. I'm definitely him. I'm, I'm going to be him. a sleeper. Uh, I'm, um, D Jack's a sleeper. I would think out of them three, it's, it's pretty much close. Yeah. They all close. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, D Ham, Taryn, and DJ is re is really close. Yeah, yeah. And I really can't say who does it better because because every game they all have something nice on. Yeah. Them or whatever. I compliment Taryn every time he put because he's locker like right beside mm -hmm. mine on game on game day. Yeah. And I'd be like, dang, we get that piece from. I like that. <laughs> or whatever. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm just trying to, you know, what I'm saying, put it together. Trying yeah, to be like Megan, Megan be putting it together though. You know, <laughs> you know they Taryn. I'm calling him out. I'm I looking right at you, before, Taryn. Taryn. Yeah. I heard that your girl be putting yep. it. Uh, your lady, your stylist. Yep. I mean, it's cool. We keep put it inside the house. Yeah. Yep. Um, funniest in the room. 
Funny is... I think some people might be able to guess this, but I'm interested I, to see if you're uh, going to say the person is, who I think. I don't know. Michael bothering me every day. <laughs> every day. Is that day. funny, though, or it, is he just pissed? It's actually funny because hey, I, I know it's going to happen. Look, this is the thing right now. Like, I'm not on the field, so my role... So you're this, just in everybody's I'm business. Just, I'm just, no, you're not that. It's just <laughs> no, I just am kidding. just trying to keep the room light. But but That's I would good. definitely uh, probably go with Tredavis White. Mm-hmm. Tredavis. That's Tredavis. what I said, too. Tredavis. We had we had Dham on last yeah, week. Yeah, and we said we Tredavis. said the same thing. Definitely Tredavis. Tredavis. You just never know what's gonna come out here. He mouth. he always screaming. He always hollering. I'm just, ah. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly. cool, man. That's just out of nowhere. That's exactly what you what thinking like. when yeah. you're coming there. Yeah. He always dance. He always got a great sense of energy yeah. or whatever. He always get, you know, everybody going. Everybody quiet in, in there in the morning. Until you know, he probably walking walks there in. with his breakfast and all that stuff. With the sunglasses still, on? Well, yeah, sunglasses on. do rag do rag with the hat on. All that. Hood on. Big floaty, you yeah. know, <laughs> sweatpants. Yeah. And they're just, you know, shoes, sweatpants. Every like time. Like big, yeah. That's every time, but yeah. definitely Trey Davis. He definitely, but yeah, what y'all really don't know, it's true. David just can dress. He can. He don't he can. wear to the field though. He no. never wear to the yeah. field. But if you outside the outside then he the wears facility, those same gray sweatpants every time. Yeah. But yeah. true. Davy is really he hard to dress. He, he got that college look in the building. Yeah. But then when he really stepped out, of the out building? he can yeah. dress. Who are you, Trey? Yeah, yeah. He can dress. <laughs> like really can. Got to get him on to talk about it. All right, one more. Who's the old head in the room? Ah, oh, sorry, buddy. Mm. I'm yeah. not the oldest though. But Who's do you act oldest? like it? Xavier. Uh, is Xavier the oldest, but... He's a newbie. He, yeah, he's yeah. a newbie. You've been, been here five years, Mike. Come on. You know it's you, probably because I talk a lot you right know now, you the, You know you, you, the, you know you the granddaddy of the group, bro. I'm not the granddaddy <laughs> of the group. <laughs> she does. Am I really? Yes. You know what? You know what I'm saying? But that's a good thing, though. That's a good thing. Who people look... Like, even when you're not that playing right thing. now. Yeah. That's who true. the coaches look to... When we and me, that's true. Micah, uh, Micah right settle here. them yeah. down, Micah. This is what they say. Uh, we sitting in there. No, Micah, he's on IR right now. All right, Micah, what you think right here about this? Thing? I'm sitting over like, like, like I ain't even playing this he, he so there, why, yeah. why are you even asking him? <laughs> hey, I've been thinking that sometimes so, too. So, so, so that go your answer, Micah. Yeah. He's a, he's you a, know what? You know, I'll take the it. old head of the group. I'll take it, man. Right. But so he's Micah a great leader, though. So it's, you know, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah. Hand in hand. Thank you for coming on, man. We love you. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right, let's get into whiteboard thoughts. So we want to do some pop culture on this show. So this is a segment where we're going to talk some pop culture, talk some football mm-hmm. today, mostly pop culture. So a couple random questions here. We're going to jot down our answer on our whiteboard. And number one, it's, it's the holiday season. Yes. You know, everybody's getting in, in the Christmas mood. So do you put up holiday direction, directions, decorations? Are you somebody family that does it before or after well, Thanksgiving. Um, and I'm writing this down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so write down before or after and we're going to flip okay. it. Okay. And this is, to be correct, this is before or after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm ready when you are. Okay. What? You're putting them up before Thanksgiving? Okay. So the way I do it is I would possibly do it around Thanksgiving. My wife is like immediately after Halloween. We're going straight to Christmas. So I'm I don't have a problem with that. I just don't have time to do this in my life. Oh, yeah, I don't so have time I'm either, doing but it I'm after forced, Thanksgiving. I'm forced to put that tree up and I'm forced to do whatever. So it's it's well before So you're putting the tree up in the house. It's well before Thanksgiving, yeah. Do you guys chop one down? Do you guys no, have no, one no. every we have year? Like a, we have a, a nice know, 12 foot tree something like that. Okay. Where I got to go Okay, Micah. And, you got yeah. money. We know. Oh. 12 foot tree. <laughs> no, it's, Mine is like 3. Out. I'm just right, kidding. Get you one right at Target. That's it's right there. <laughs> okay. I admire the people who do it before Thanksgiving. I yeah. mean, why not be in the holiday spirit for as long as possible? Yeah. If it brings a little bit of joy to your You know what? In Buffalo, to your life. It's, it's, the snow it feels around. like the holiday it's, season. Yeah, it's it's cloudy. It's Starting whatever, you know. October. Let's get some Christmas spirit going early all the way through Thanksgiving and off into Christmas. That's okay. The, that's my wife. Right. That's what my wife says. Yeah. Way to go. Yeah, exactly. What's the best thing you've watched lately? Give me a show, give me a movie. Mm. Could be new, could be old, something that you're in the middle of watching. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with this is this is off the this is off the wall. Oh. I don't think I know how to spell it. I'm doing it right. a show. I'm doing a show too, and this is off the wall. Okay, ready? Okay. Yep. Flip it. Yep. All right. Stranger Things. Was that season four? Season four. Mm, love it. Ancient Apocalypse. Has anybody else seen this on no, Netflix? No, I have no idea what you're Nobody? talking about. Okay, this show's insane. 
Um, it talks about what, like just where ancient. did you find this? Yeah, I feel like this I'm, is not a I'm show like a that I'm a history nerd is out um, there and it just popped up and we're going to have history lessons with Micah next week. Ooh, everybody. I like it. I like it. But no, I love Stranger Things. Okay. That's a very good show. Yeah, we were me and my husband watch it late to the party. Um, I was caught up. He was not. So we had to watch the entire series, which I don't mind doing. I, yeah, I, I went through Game of, of Thrones a second time with him because he hadn't watched it before. Um, but the last season was amazing. I thought it was the final season because it was supposed to be. And so we're watching the last episode and I'm like, that ended on the biggest cliffhanger in the world. And so then I like immediately go to my phone. I'm like, is there going to be another up. season? What is going on? Season five is coming back. We're good. We had to wait a few years for yeah. season four. Hopefully that's not the case for season five. So yep. um, Ancient Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Yeah, is so like about... I said, I'm a big uh, history nerd. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't, I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't believe in everything that the guy's saying. But he's talking about ancient Egypt and all this type of stuff. And I'm very fascinated about, you know, what would, what life was like back then and what the people were thinking about. And so okay, interesting. Kind of, yeah, yeah. I like it. I yeah. like it. All right, our final question for Whiteboard Thoughts is, which is easier? This is based off a video that kind of went viral on the Internet this past week, mm -hmm. um, which has now been deemed fake, I believe. <laughs> Steph Curry made five made air And quotes, I lost my quotes. mind when I saw that video. Made five full yeah. court shots. In a row, he didn't even, it wasn't like, mm, it was like, Whoa. Yeah. All right, so which is easier, making five full court shots in a row or going to the moon? Easier. You easier. could take different, like, routes with this, too. Yeah. Depending on how you think about it. What is easier? I'm say. What are you thinking? Three, two, one. Yeah, I'm on the same page. Same, same page. Yeah, I know yeah. this is probably like nearly impossible to do, but going to the... Uh, yeah, you put full, I put half. I meant full, the, of course. That's way easier. Yeah, it is easier. <laughs> but, but that is, this is still easier than going to the moon. Yeah. So, People agree. have gone to the moon, we know that. But I don't, I don't know if anybody's ever made five full court shots in a row before in their life, but I just think of everything that it takes to go to the moon and yeah. it's definitely harder than yes. throwing a basketball at a hoop for sure i agree but it's we're a good the, you know we're on the same page. good conversation yep let's head into the film room for a little bit of a film session mm. with micah it doesn't always have to be bill's plays we're gonna go around the league here mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is a stefan gilmore interception so they were playing against the cowboys and this one that you're going to take us through is the one takeaway that the Colts had. So it was third and 10 on Dallas's 35 yard line. Yeah. Dak Prescott's pass was intended for uh, Michael Gallup here. Yeah. So as you can see, third and 10, and it's 2.56 left on the clock, right before half. And so obviously Dallas is trying to drive down and get a score before, mm -hmm. before half. And so they're gonna, it's third and 10, they're trying to push the ball vertical. Um, if you look at the formation, it is a three by one bunch with a Y off. Close All right, three by one bunch. Three by one, one receiver on the one side, three on the other. Mm -hmm. um, gun far, which means the back is away from the tight end. Okay. And the tight end is close to the core. So this look is telling me, if I'm on defense, on third down, third and 10, that they're gonna you know, protect a little more so that the defensive line doesn't get to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, just a little more protection. Yep. Uh, most likely three man route with the two receivers on one side and the single receiver on the other side. And they have a guy um, to the re single receiver that they can play um, pretty aggressive with, which is Stefan Gilmore, mm -hmm. you know, defensive player of the year. We know A few him. years back, yeah, Bill's guy. Yep. Um, very good, very, you know, shout out to the older guys in the league. He's one of them making plays for us. Still for making us plays. old heads, yeah. So um, they kind of lean the coverage away from him, and he just, he's just patient. I, I, you know, I respect a lot of corners in this league because that's a hard position to play, and he's just very patient on this play. And, you know, he's not, he's not really threatened vertical by the receiver. And so he kind of just sits on the outside shoulder. And as soon as the, the receiver tries to break out, he's there. Um, and I feel like the best DBs in this league play to their leverage. And so he's outside leverage. He's not going to give up the outside, route, the outside route. And as you can see, breaks out. He cuts it off, picks it off. And a couple plays before this, um, he actually jumped on a slant. And Michael Gallup got his hand in there and mm -hmm. broke it up. So it was kind of one of those plays. My my mentality in the game. Damn, he was I just, already looking his chops. Yes, ready, I ready just to dropped a pick. One. Oh, now I really need to get a pick. And then a couple plays later, throws it my way. I'm, how how tough is patience as a DB? It's very tough when you, you're you trying to know, react. I, you know, it's it's all about how you watch film. Um, you have to study the offense. Sometimes. You know, they the it's a vertical passing team where there's all everything's downfield. Air so you raid gotta, offense. Yeah, you got to open up. You got to run. 
Um, but sometimes, you know, if you read, which a lot of good corners in this league and even safeties, you can read routes. As soon as the stem happens, as soon as he releases inside, it doesn't matter where he's lined up at. Um, you know that once he does this, this, uh, you know, you're that's eliminating your routes, essentially. So mm -hmm. that's the giveaway. And, and um, you know, Stefan Gilmore is one of the best in the league at doing that. All right, it's time for Micah's Minute. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep going around the league here with a couple of NFL-related topics. I'm going to put 60 seconds on the clock mm. here, and you're going to help me discuss. Okay, let's do it. So let me get 60 on the clock here, get a shot clock going. All right, topic number one is the AFC East this season. Mm -hmm. Go. Uh, it's a, what do you got for us? Best in the league, best division in the league. Um, I feel like the quarterback play in this league has really stepped up with, you know, somebody like Tua, Mac Jones coming along. Obviously, he's not having the season he had last year, but um, the team plays into that a little bit. And then with the, you know, competition that's going on in, in, in New York with the Jets, um, that's always just something you got to look out for. So I feel like all the teams um, in, in previous years, you know, they were young quarterbacks, mm -hmm. young guys that, you know, really weren't established quarterback situations. But now um, they're all coming along. It's the best division in football. And so um, here we are leading the division, leading the AFC. Um, got to keep going, keep, you know, keep winning. Got another big matchup this week against the Jets. And uh, we're all excited for another home game in Buffalo. All right, you did that in good timing. I'm going to pick up where you left off. It's crazy to watch the AFC East. This is a division that is on the come up. Like yes. you said, a bunch of younger players, young teams, younger coaches. Robert Sala, for example, mm -hmm. Sean McDermott, a younger coach. It's been wild to watch what the Bills have done in the last two years. Mm -hmm. They went 9-0 and against the AFC East at one point from 2020 to 21. Yeah. Flip the script this year, that is not how it came no. together for no. the Bills so far. But they still got a, a lot of room um, to win games against the AFC East. I love it because... This is one of the best divisions in the NFL, the That's NFC it. East and the AFC East, um, two divisions who have the best NFL records yeah. at this point in the season. It's been nice to see Tour's resurgence. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I know he's big on the two, Dolphins, but I, I enjoy watching what he's doing this year because I hate when people count quarterbacks 100%. out, count players 100%. out. It affects your confidence, mm -hmm. and so it's been cool to see what Mike McDaniels has been able to do yeah. with Tua. He's got Tyreek on his side. Yeah, the Jets helps. have had an sure incredible up. draft over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. They've had some really good drafts, have great pieces. I like Robert Sala as a coach. I'm interested to see too. if they can put it together. Quarterback questions there. Maybe some quarterback questions still with the Patriots. We'll see how, how Mac Jones comes together, if mm -hmm. he's going to be the guy over the next couple of years. A lot of things are going to come together, I think, in the next couple of years in the AFC East. But one thing is for sure, it's just going to keep getting tougher and tougher. That is 100% All right, sure. topic number two for you. If you could be in one division other than the AFC East, which division would it be and why? Go for it. Other than the AFC East, any other division, um, I, would say, I would say the NFC South. Uh, you got to take the warm weather. Um, you know, <laughs> even though I'm, I, I'm not. You've a warm been in weather two guy, cold weather divisions yeah, in I mean, your I'm NFL Ohio, career. Ohio. I went to Iowa, Green Bay, and now Buffalo. I, that's just you know. But you got a house in Cali, though. I do got a house in Cali. Yeah. So I, I, that's mm. probably uh, that's probably just the warm weather talking. You know, the nice weather talking inside of me. But I would probably pick that division. Okay, I'm gonna go NFC North. I grew up in Chicago. Mm. I grew up watching the NFC North. You know the NFC I, North I very do love well. I the NFC North. Cause you played yeah. for the Packers, yeah. so um, Bears, Packers, Lions, Vikings. I think it would just be be fun to be yeah. a part of that because that's yeah. what I know really well. All right, last topic for you. We're going to talk about Bills games this season. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite Bills game this season so far, and why? So my favorite game, uh, I, you know, I did like when against the Patriots the other day, but that's not my favorite game. Mm -hmm. uh, I got surgery at the end of September, um, as we all know, and I was at the house in, in Cali, in San Diego, and um, I was forced to watch the games from the TV. I had to buy the Sunday ticket, which is expensive. <laughs> um, it's like 300 and something dollars. I'm like, what is now this? Now you know what Bills fans go Yeah, through. this was insane. So I'm out in Cali, I couldn't watch the, the East Coast game, so I had to buy them, and it was the Kansas City game. Um, you know, just seeing how you know, we just, we, we fought that game. We were down, we were up, we were down, we were up. And in the last drive, you know, the, listen to the commentators talk about Patrick Mahomes, mm -hmm. you know, driving down. And, um, you know, obviously we know what happened in the, in the playoff game last yep. year. And to see, um, you know, Taryn come up with a big pick. I jumped off the couch. This is after surgery. And I'm, I jumped up and almost messed up my neck again. <laughs> um, but it was just awesome to see. And I was watching from a, a, different, stand, a different stand. Oh, I lost it. 
keep going. You're good. Well, I was finish, watching finish from a different thought. standpoint, and it was uh, it was cool to see. I forgot we were doing sixty seconds. Yeah, I'm not did that lie. scare I was you just, a little bit? I was Wake talking up. about I was talking about the game. So. I, I was I was in the moment yeah. with you. That yeah. game was so fun. Um, number one for me, uh, the week one win over mm. the Rams. There That's was cool. I know. You guys don't like the hype. I love the hype. There was so much hype mm -hmm. going into that game against the Super Bowl champions of last year. 31-10 yeah. to 10 win. There was never a doubt for the Bills. And then coming out of that game, you open the season with that game. It's the only game on at that yeah. point. Yeah. Everybody and their mom and dad and brother, sister, and dog <laughs> are watching this game. And then people talk about it for the next couple days because then the rest of the season starts that yeah. weekend. So we had a couple days where everybody was talking about the Bills and how good they looked in that game. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just the perfect setup to this season. I loved it. It yeah. was everything I wanted. So that, that's been my favorite so Keep far. Hopefully there's a couple more favorites to come. We have a segment where we're gonna shout out Bill's Mafia because we think you guys are so special. What you guys do on the field to what we do in terms of content and things that we release. So I asked fans to tweet us a picture of them and their Bill's and gear. how many replies you get? Let me know their favorite player. We got, I think at this point, it's probably 900 responses. I thought I was gonna get like 20 and Mike <laughs> and I were gonna pick from 20 pictures, no big deal. I spent hours yeah. going through I went through every single one starting. Are you surprised though? Like, no, it's not been like at all. the fans, not at these all. fans are. At this are point, else. I didn't get through every single one, but I tried to. Uh, so we, we picked, we picked like a couple favorites, and we're gonna keep going through these week by week. Yeah. Um, so number one, we want to shout out Devet. She says our favorite Bills player, Stefan Diggs. Love it. Yep. They're at, at the, the game, game, obviously, looking good in their Bills gear. Is that that might be my suite right there? Oh, wow. Shout out to them. Wow. Okay. Right in front of the suite. They, they don't even they, know it. They knew that was your suite. Yeah. Um, LA or La. Sup, Lala. My nephew loves Josh Allen so much. He dressed up like him for favorite book character day at his school. Nice. He's Josh Allen is a book character as well as an NFL yeah. player. What a star, Josh. He looks good. He looks good. <laughs> and then we've got Al Fay. Shaq Lawson. He loves Shaq. That's and cool. Water he skiing. loves water skiing. And on one foot right now. That's, and it also looks like it's cold because he's got gloves. Has the Bills long gear on pants. too. That, that's impressive, man. Okay. Our fans. Next You're an athlete. Level. And we're going to end with a little bit of Bills Vader. They said Trey White. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is. is pretty epic. That's the stuff, you know, riding in uh, to, to away games, riding into the stadium on the buses, you see the most crazy characters and I feel like that's something you would see. That's something I would see just going into it. And game. it'd be like, it, for somebody who is not a part of this team, they would think it's crazy, but yeah. for you, you're probably like, just it's normal. another day It's normal. Practice. I literally just take a sip of my tea and I just go about my way, just keep listening to my music because it's, it's normal. You're a tea guy pregame? Yeah, I'm a tea guy. Oh, what yeah. tea you drinking? Um, whatever they have. So I'll, I'll mostly do green tea with a little green honey. Tea. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not not a coffee guy, only tea. Straight tea. I do tea? coffee too. Okay. Yeah, it depends. If I need to, coffee and if tea. I need, if I need to pick me up, I do some coffee. But most of the time, I do tea. Coffee and tea with the side of Bill's Mafia. Yeah. That's how we love it. Yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for us for this first episode mm. of the Maddie and Micah show. The, the Mike, Mike and, and Maddie, Maddie show. show. The Eminem yes. show. Whatever you want to call it, we're here to tell you guys about Bills, the NFL pop culture, and just what happens at One Bills Drive. So thanks for joining along for episode number one. Be mm -hmm. sure to follow because there's a lot more coming soon. For Mike Hyde, I'm Maddie Glab. We'll see you next time. See ya.